All right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's your nose. Hey, provoking perch, how's it going? How's it going? Hey, Jenny Zealin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is here. Hey, Captain Bows, the lone wolf. How's it going? You're the one man wolf pack. <laughs> so good. Smelly smellers, Captain Jetlag with the tough love. So, uh, topic suggestions. Throw them at me. So yesterday, if you, for some of you, I might have uh, remembered that I told you that I'm, I'm tired, and I was like, "All right, yeah, let's um, let's go uh, and have a, a little bit earlier night." And I was like, "Yeah, okay, good, good move," and I did that. But uh, of course, the kids decided that this night they shouldn't sleep so well. So there was like four, I think four times I woke up during the night and the kids, you know, like waking up and going to the toilet. And <laughs> so it was like even less sleep. So yeah, today is even more fun. Witch Hunter. Ocean Buddhist. Oh. Cat Million. Cat Million? Hey, Morphia, how's it going? Captain Boss, yeah, man. All right, so we have one, two, three topics. In the sake of time, I'm going to split the dice in two. So let's roll. Roll it. Brr, three, which means it's Ocean Buddhist. Captain Jetlag. Oh, yeah, Captain Jetlag. Ocean Buddhist by Captain Jetlag. Bud Buddhist? Buddhist. Bud Bud Buddhist. Should be with two. Two of these. Yeah, Captain Jetlag, but split it split the dice in, in three. Right, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Which means Witch Hunter, one, two. Ocean Buddhist, three, four. Uh, Cat Million, five, six. You see? That's what you do when you split dice in half. But yeah, good looking out though, but... Uh, I split it like one, two, three, four, five, six, rather than how else do you split the dice in three? Yeah. <laughs> Captain Jetler. Um Captain Bose. I don't know. Ocean Buddhist. Uh, Ocean Buddhist. Ocean Buddhist. And by the way, this is the hero card base. Um so general canvas and then the focal point you should try to have the key aspect in the focal point of the illustration you know if you decide to put some text or whatever uh, you're still going to be able to have the most clear area on uh, uh, not going to have anything in there right hey concept sab so much rigging going on so I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch using this just to kind of sh showcase the idea of it. Ocean Buddhist. Okay, how about I make a Buddha uh, made out of water? So the idea then, like, okay, let's try to put the the focal point of him in the square. It doesn't necessarily need to be like super. Everything needs to be inside it, but what's important should be inside it. Uh, concept Sam, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly, that's the idea, right? So that you can have texts and stuff. I think we should have texts, though. 
but like a work related text like years in the business uh, budding artist um hobbyist uh, length of uh sub subscription <laughs> And then with that data can always be updated, you know, like every month or, or when there is some some new stuff. You know. hey, yeah, a waterfall is not an ocean. But I mean, an ocean, a waterfall can be a part of the ocean, right? The ocean can reach a waterfall. And uh, have you seen the underwater waterfalls, which is which are crazy? There is a part of the world where there is a waterfall underneath the water, where two two different types of water meet, and there is a waterfall. Which is crazy. Cameron Brown. So, so touchy. Such a snowflake. Calm down. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, buddy. It's all good, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. Just relax. Shh, shh, shh. There, come on. Come on, it's all good, man. Deep, deep breaths. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Captain Jetlag. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It's funny. You gotta take care of the little ones. <laughs> Captain Jetlag. <laughs> hey, good some Sam. Oh man, thank you very much for the support. Four months, that's crazy. Crazy, man. But awesome. Thank you very much. Very glad for, very appreciative of the support. I'm having a blast. Hopefully you guys are also enjoying the ride. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm really, really very happy about it. It's a fun journey to, to, to have with you guys, where we explore the art world. <laughs> of 6.4, bro. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> You know, you don't, the size isn't, you can still be a small giant. A tiny giant. You know? I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> hey, Eric Boy, how's it going? Kilrathi. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Sheldon. Ah, oh, so many people. I'm doing this without reference, by the way. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, I know I need to add certain elements like water breaking, uh, light reflections, 
subsurface scattering, um, translucency in the material, and uh, like showcasing that that he is see-through. But I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Where where should I make the move? You know, that's currently what I'm thinking. I'm a little bit scared of of making that decision. Of okay, here is this. This is gonna be that, because I have I'm doing it from you know just just randomly. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> It's fine, but it's not fine. Zeal, no, I'm not fine at the moment. I'm scared. Okay. Let's make some moves here. Yeah, that, this is the this is the thing I love about uh, warm ups and doing studies and uh, drawing from the mind is is challenging challenging yourself of what's actually in my mind you know be like water be like water my friend what the, what does did the, what did he say you pour water into a cup the water becomes the cup you pour water into a, a glass the water becomes the glass. Be water, my friend. No, but what what I was saying about um, doing studies, I think, and 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 warm ups in the sense of not looking at reference uh, as an example we've all experienced water i hope and uh, and the, the the idea of we know how water breaks as in the the wave breaking uh, you know becoming more white hey voodoo what's going how's it going man uh, we all, we all, we have all seen it. It's not something we have not seen, right? But I mean, we we know what it looks like. We've seen it. We we know the water breaks, and it, the color changes in the wave. There's translucency in the wave. Uh, there's uh, we can see the bottom of the ocean. Uh, of the beach occasionally right we can we can see particles in the water we can all these things we know this right this there's no secret to it yet <laughs> here I am painting water in the sense of how like in the sense of being scared of what do I need to draw now in order for it to, to come across correctly? When my brain, in theory, knows this, it's seen it, I've experienced waves, I've been in water, I've, I've looked underwater, I've, I've seen thousands of waves breaking, I've, I've looked at water, oceans, and rivers, and all these things, bazillions of times. Yet, there's a struggle in bringing that out and i'm always fascinated by that aspect that we are conscious we're conscious right we 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 are aware of things we are sentient we have recall but when we have to define it and when we have to create it it becomes this weird this weird thing that that we actually don't know when we actually do know. 
Like if you see in a face, in the, in a sense, like if nothing is wrong with you, <laughs> except me, uh, you should be able to to recollect that face. I mean that's why a lot of like psychotherapists and psychologists are you know big on the unconscious and uh, regression and so on. Like you can through hypnosis uh, re retrieve information. Eric, I don't know if we started from a half circle. Probably, Eric. Probably. <laughs> Uh, Zialin, yeah, absolutely, and and it's something I've been talking about on the stream before about uh, implicit and explicit mind states. So you you uh, being in the zone versus recalling information, and the best place is to be in the in the middle, right, where you can where you can lean back and go, okay, so what's the next step? Without uh, removing yourself from the zone, right, the zone where we are. In the flow state where we're where we're creative where we're just happy jumping along you know and that's the problem with uh, in the beginning of your art is that you you spend a lot of time in your explicit mind state recalling information where where in actuality the best is to just you know put on your favorite music and disappear for a while and then practice by doing you're being conscious conscious about things and studying a material or studying a subject and uh, and then you add that information into your subconscious and then when you're just being creative you can you can lean on that subconscious that the information is just in there magically but it's not magically it's you put you spend time and effort into putting it in there but for me like i said i'm always fascinated by that aspect Cameron Brown, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There is a, there is absolutely, absolutely that aspect of it as well. That you are intentionally damaging your own process by by thinking in symbolisms and and knowing that oh the water is like this, so the water I need to draw it like that. When in reality your brain knows the opposite. Right, it knows the behavior of it. It knows a uh, memory of it, not about the logo of it. Right, the kind of the symbol, the umbrella logo of water, like the umbrella symbol of a nose. What when in reality a nose isn't how we draw a nose. Usually, a nose is just a, a collection of subforms. But when we draw a nose, we draw the symbol of a nose, of like nostrils, or the, the arc of the nose. It's a, it's a, it's a definitely a fascinating thing. But that's the problem also. That we are facing as as creatives is we're we're trying to describe a specific thing, right? Not just here's water, general. We are we are trying to create something with intent, with a narrative, with a purpose, uh, to elicit a, a reaction, and then it becomes more complicated than just. What does water look like?
Uh, concept Sam, yep, that is exactly why they say don't draw what you think you see, but draw what you actually see. That is the absolute reason why they say so. Because they can see you are applying things you think you know, or, or you think uh, a leg should look like, or a angle of a foot, or whatever. And it's very obvious when you do. And especially if you have a model you can look at, and they'll see, all right, you're drawing what you think you're seeing, not what you're actually just observing. Uh, morphia, yeah, but I'm not talking about symbolism as in... Um, as in, in cryptographics. <laughs> I mean symbolism as we as humans are thinking in symbols, naturally. We cannot do that because it's hardwired into our learning process and that's how we learn faster. And I, I, I've talked about this before and I feel like I'm repeating myself, but in, in a talk of creativity I did uh, two years ago, uh, I talked about the human mind and, 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 and the artificial intelligence and that when an artificial intelligence without eyes or uh, without an intellect they uh, tries to navigate the world and they run into troubles trying to uh, create AI that understands the surroundings because, for example, when we see a beanbag, we know it's something we sit on but it's nowhere close to the generic aspect of a chair. But yet we can, we know exactly what a beanbag is when we see it. But an AI wouldn't uh, know what it is because it doesn't have a physicality, it doesn't have a body, it doesn't have a, uh, a thing to interact with, an under understanding of the principles. And, and, and so that when when it sees a beanbag, it has to, without the body, it can't explore it, right? It can't go, oh, it's a chair, like tapping it with its hands, right? Because it, it doesn't, it can't do it. But we as humans, we do it all the time for everything. And, and that's how our brain works so that we don't need to be like, our world doesn't need to be rocked every time there's a new beanbag. We can just go, oh, it's another beanbag. I know what that is. It's a chair. And that's what I mean with symbolism. Like they say, we, we're drawing a nose. We know what a nose looks like uh, because we have to through learning. That's just how our brains are geared. That's what I mean about symbolism or like logos. Absolutely, Eric. That's a, that's a, a good example. One, that's a, a slide on my talk is, is a circle with two dots, uh, 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 shape L and uh, something that looks like a mouth like this in a circle and uh, like what is this everyone says it's a face or it's actually more like this everyone says it's a face and I said yeah sure it can be a face but it can also be a pizza uh, or it can be anything else or it can just be a circle with circles in it <laughs> Captain Jetlag. Captain Bose. Yeah, exactly. But the problem, for example, with creating something that has to communicate. Hey, Team Rivers, cheers for the raid. The last eight minutes. Much appreciated, sir. I asked for a pizza, not the face. Yeah. 
but yeah, Captain Boss. So the idea, right, about us being creatives, and and in this instance, I'm creating water without reference. I'm trying to, uh, and I'm I'm failing somewhat at it, but. Um, I'm trying to create water, right? And but at the same time, I need to be able to translate that fact to you, right? And then the process comes into to into play, and it's a huge part of it. And uh, with that, for example, you you talked about metal. Yeah, we can all figure out how to paint metal, but what's the best way to reproduce it so that we can communicate that with someone else? And I think that's a big problem as well when, for example, that's that's why I'm failing uh, somewhat to make it look like water today because without reference, I am kind of um, at the moment because it's a complicated pose, um, complicated material, I, I definitely made it hard for myself. But um, I have to also keep in mind of, okay, what are the steps I need to take in order to represent it to you in the most accurate way? And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making it up as I'm going, going along. And that's why I think the biggest part is, is the struggle of within 30 minutes, create something for you that uh, represents an ocean Buddha uh, using colors and so on um, accurately uh, without reference and, and, and I think that that's the tricky part at the moment and that's why I think I, I feel like I'm failing a bit because the representation of the water the representation of it all isn't as I would have liked it and, and it's not the fact of how I render, well, it is a little bit, but it's about the key aspects of water and and and, and material that is not communicated correctly, which I think I'm failing at. And maybe it is just me and my internal image of of how I see it, of of how it should be, and why I'm failing at it. I'm I'm quite sure that most of you still think it looks uh, somewhat like water. I hope. <laughs> but you understand my point, right? My internal vision of, of what the water should look like doesn't match with the output. But that doesn't mean that you won't get it, or that you don't like it, or that you are happy looking at it. Which is also an interesting thing about creating something and, and and not using reference and all these things but yeah you maybe you maybe feel like you're failing because of your own internal symbolism of let's say uh, water Captain Boss, yeah, exactly, and and those those the painting something very realistic. You got to look at real life because, uh, or you need to be very very into a subject where you you're you have spent a lot of time breaking down everything, or you do just research and have references such so that you can look up, uh, and you you have you have compartmentalized everything going. Here's foam reference, here's translucency reference, here's wave reference, here's uh, water reference, and all these things. And then when you're painting, you go, okay, now I'm going to focus on um, translucency. So you look at translucency reference, or you look at uh, Buddha references, etc. Et and, and that way you can compartmentalize and specialize a lot easier. And if you're going to do everything from, from your mind, you really need to have studied the subject a lot, a lot to have have that information internally. And that's a great, that's, a, that's one of the reasons why it's great to do studies where you don't just copy 
but where you where you un try to understand the subject, right? Okay, let's say I'm going to paint metal, and you're not copying the photo, but you're looking at the behavior of the metal uh, with information, and then you go right. So if I would have to look at this reference of metal, this arbitrary or this made up example. Uh, then, but I would need to paint it as a gun, and then you look at it and go, right, oh, okay, I see, I see. The metal has this effect on when the form is turning over here, or blah, 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 blah. and then you and then you try to adapt it to the. You need to you're, you're going to try to understand the material in order for you to paint it in your own uh, application of. You know, Which is it's really tricky. <laughs> Captain Bob, so thank you, but. It's it's okay. Not exactly how I would have liked it, but it is what it is. Let's see. Oh, funny that you said so, Zialin. Um, that's where I'm uh, collecting it from my mind. Because it's a recent study of water of how it breaks and I've actually color picked it from my mind and if we if if we look at what Zeelin uh, referenced you see how quite accurate my my recall of uh, of the study because I studied the reflections of of the water versus light and and how it breaks so I've added that information in my mind. So now that I recall it, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember. I need the bigger, broader green strokes, and then I need the water on top that on the surface breaks. And because I was consciously thinking about it when I did the study, and I didn't, I I messed up with the replication, the one-to-one -one copy of the photo source, because that wasn't the intention of the study. The intention of the study was to uh, understand it. And clearly, I I do understand it because I'm replicating the colors and the behavior. And that's a good, good um, proof uh, that I studied that water correctly. Captain Bowes, yeah. But the idea is, this, is still the same, right? Do you understand the metal when you do the study, or are you just copying the image? Because if you're just copying the image, you're practicing in, in re reproduction and not understanding what you're actually painting. It's a huge difference. Right, time's up. Uh, so, <clears throat> so this is what I mean about the with about the frame, right? So we can see it's the focal point of the the painting, and we could, um, you could argue that. Um, one second. That maybe we are too 
edge to edge. So in the sense of the card, we maybe want to do a little bit more like that, right? Because if, if we don't see everything else, uh, if we hide everything and we only look at the, the focal point, a second. Like that representation or this. So you see that this, okay, the focal point, if you would only see the focal point, it would be a little bit lost, the circumstantial stuff. Here we will at least understand it a little bit better. Better. <laughs> better. But the compositionally, it's a bit broken, so we need to adjust that. If I would take this to push this as a hero card, I would. I would do more of this and add more things into the frame. Uh, and here, it only works at this scale. All right, who can we um, who can we raid? Any suggestions? I'm up for takers. There's a one artist that's walking around Prague. Gears are kind of sketching something. Uh, Sozomaika, what she's doing. That looks pretty cool. And was Christopher Kant do it? It's also pretty cool. So here, oh, the co comic guy is on, on again. Um, mm -mm -mm. let's raid Christopher Kant. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Good night. If in that part of the world. Uh, oh, sh pfft, nice, nice. Christopher Kant. Let me see. Let me get it right. There we go. Now we're ready. Um, all right. Have a good one, everyone. Good night. Have a great day. Hopefully, I won't fall asleep. <laughs> okay. You guys are the best. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye. Out of time.